right. for the first one I, or two. I, I will not say much on this this week. I'll okay. Um, two was a real slog. Three I liked because it went back and sort of over. And then four I really enjoyed. But then when I looked into five and started to talk to people, they went, oh, you don't want to do five. Nobody ever talks about five. Five. And but I just five thought, is I didn't say one that of the to week. you. No. Yeah, but, but I'm talking to people I trust and respect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> The thing, the thing that intrigued me about Series 2 is that it did reset everything. It was almost as if Series 1 didn't happen for half the year. Yeah, it was just not and that, as compelling. And that, I think, was very purposeful storytelling by the writer. Was You know, things do change. Things move on. Things don't always stay the same. But then I think perhaps he thought, well, I don't want to alienate my, my viewers. I'll go back to what yeah. is good and go back to it in do Series 3. Do you think this was your first experience of HBO? Yeah, proper experience of HBO. I don't remember the terminology, whether The Sopranos was before this or after that. Uh, but yeah, I think this was very much my, my first foray into The Sopranos that. was before. And yeah. I'd kind of watched The Sopranos and thought, oh yeah, I'll, either I'll come back to it or, you know, this isn't for me and, and never really have sort of finished it. There is, a t- there is a fact that this is the first show that I could say that I binged watched. Oh, I, really? I, I ran through pretty much all five series, one after another. Because uh, now I, the... I don't, now I don't see you. I mean, you've got this. You've not only got this list, but you've got an even bigger list of shows that you are planning <laughs> to go back to yeah. when you're I, reincarnated. I, 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 I dare, I dare yeah. even. Sometimes I don't, don't open that list because it's like, oh no. Yeah. The, this you went back to, so that yeah. that is good. But I what think... made you go back each time? Well, it was I, like I, you again, wanted think, to uh, like it. If enough people tell you to watch a show, eventually you must give in. <laughs> and I think unless I think... it's me and Matt. <laughs> Well, no, but I think, look look at what, well, I have to point to the, 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 the Peaky Blinders experience that we've recently yeah. had. Here yeah, is a show that everybody's been going on about. And okay. finally, you went back and watched it because we all did. And now, where are you? You're up to date, aren't you? I'm, I'm waiting for series four. Exactly. Yeah, so, it, so, it does I mean, happen. It, it does happen. I think eventually, if enough of the right people say you need to watch something, then you do end up yeah. watching it. We do feel like there's, there's less time to watch things now because there's so much stuff. And that was a time... Mm. Where yeah. you wouldn't have been missing out on a lot had you decided to Well, possibly a social after. life, but let's not go there. Yeah, well, we've none of us have got <laughs> that. Overrated. <laughs> the box sets to binge on our desert island. You listening? The dramas we couldn't live without. Unbelievable! These are Gary's Desert Island Dramas. I like it. And make sure you subscribe on iTunes for the latest episodes of the Custard TV podcast. Number six is the second sci-fi programme. It's Battlestar Galactica. This is the remake uh, in the mid 2000s, rather than the original in the late 1970s, this kind of kicked off this idea that you can go back and start to remake old shows and, and, and really give them a new twist. And there were a lot of people very skeptical about this when it came out, mostly because it did major things like Starbuck uh, in the original, who was played by uh, the face from 18, Dirt Benedict, uh, and it was then going to be played by um, a woman, Katie Sackoff. Um, and, and, and they changed a lot of other things as well, you know, and, and a lot of people didn't like it, but there was a, a mini series, which was basically around the whole idea of the Cylons attacking earth and it kind of blew people away. And it certainly blew me away because it was so political and it was so different throughout its five series. They dealt a lot with, uh, terrorism. They dealt with, um, uh, racism. They dealt with sexuality in a space drama, I think that this was the first time they really dealt with big issues like that in, in what was, I know it wasn't a network show, but it, it certainly was a frontline show that a lot of people were watching and talking about. I absolutely adored this. There's an episode in the first series that's called 42. And the reason it's called 42 is every 42 minutes, the Cylons jump into where the Battle of Star Galactica is every 42 seconds. So they have to get ready every 42 minutes, sorry, to jump into hyperspace to get away from the Cylons. And it's a wonderful piece of television because it's a, such a simple concept. But of course, in the early part of the show, it's like, yeah, we're really up for this. We can beat the Cylons. And then as it goes on and on, you realise it's every 42 minutes. It's it's terrifying and it's so psychological and it begins to drain them and and it's just you can't you can't see how they're ever going to get out of it and it's very clever how they get that's out of it that's what i was talking it. about that that sort of sci-fi rather than sort of yeah I'd say. that that sort of concept that sort of episode would probably appeal to me i've never seen this but yeah that is the sort of sci-fi that would appeal to me 
the way in which it keeps itself fresh is it didn't actually feature Cylon robots like the one from the 70s. The Cylons had, had found a way to have robots that looked like humans. Uh, and, and, and the main thing throughout the series was who's a, who's a human and who's a Cylon and how many, you know, once you had one Cylon, you had many Cylons. You know, they were all, uh, you know, they could all replicate themselves and things like that. And the, the one thing was the, the very attractive uh, Cylon. Was it nine? Was it seven? No, it wasn't seven of nine. What was her name? Voyager. Well, no, no, no. But there was a very famous uh, blonde, sexy Cylon. Seven uh, and eleven. Uh, seven eleven. <laughs> And, Four and, of one and, and ten of the other. Yeah. <laughs> Six of one and half of the other. That's what I was going for. And she was, she was actually a sort of like... Number six. Six, thank you very Fisher much. That's the prisoner, isn't it? That's yeah. a different show. She was basically inside one of the lead characters, Baltar's head, all the time. <laughs> I wonder what you could boom stack about you. <laughs> yeah. I think the other thing, the reason I like this is that it was heavy on the politics. You, you did have... Not only the kind of the, the the battle star side of it, you know, the the, the the battle against the Cylons. There was political wrangles. It featured a, a a politician who was not a leader but was thrust into the role. President was like the um, foreign. No, she wasn't even the foreign secretary. She was like the agriculture secretary. But then everybody got killed, so she was the president. You know, and I like that concept. I like that idea of forced leadership on you and what it, what it does to people. Um, so there you uh, are. That's if... that's my number six. But what number was it that we were trying to remember? Oh, six. <laughs> so the show was not <laughs> <laughs> so ironic. And the woman was and six. The, they are. the and irony and is the favourite episode was 42. If you're playing bingo today on the podcast. And there was also yeah. an episode of The Wire called 30, if you're keeping up with the number episode. And we mentioned 13 <laughs> yeah. earlier in the podcast, so... Uh, <laughs> house! Oh no, that's another show. Um, <laughs> that ain't nice. <laughs> no, that's on the almost list, along with 24. Okay. And then the number. <laughs> number five is the second of the two British shows, and no surprises here, it is the excellent Line of Duty. Was DCC Dryden known to you in purely a professional capacity? No. It won't be on that. This alleged relationship with Deputy Chief Constable Dryden. Alleged. Describe this alleged relationship. It began when we worked in crime audit together and it ended a couple of months ago. And how did it end? He didn't leave his wife. He made promises. Is that right? Yeah. What kind? That he would leave his wife. God, get me straight. The issue here is that an allegation has been put forward by you, D.I. Denton, that somehow the Deputy Chief Constable has set you up to take the blame for the ambush that happened on the night of September the 5th. Now, is that about the top and the bottom of it? Honestly, sir, I don't know. <sighs> and you wouldn't have anything to substantiate this theory? Have you a little thing called evidence? It's just so darn good and well-written and surprising. There's no fault of this show that I can make. I can't fault no. this show in any area, really. I watched all three series as they were on and I think pretty much because of my very early on uh, lapsing when um, when someone came back to the series and I had to learn it on Twitter and not online, not face to face I started watching it each week when it was on again. I learnt very quickly that Life of Duty is not a show that you can miss when it's on Thursday nights at 9 o'clock or whatever time no. it's on. This is kind of what the UK does a lot better than the US I would say, is this idea of you have to watch it live because otherwise, it's, you're already behind the news. And that's kind of mm. like the Broadchurch effect, wasn't it? Was You couldn't watch Broadchurch the day after because it would be ruined. And there is another yeah. show on my list that I think also you know, is, a, is a, a great example of that. For me, Line of Duty is, is pretty much great British television at its best. This FA1 was issued to AFOs at Southbury Police Station on the day of 13th of May of this year. You recognise that form? I do, sir. Is that your signature? It is, sir. Mm -hmm. According to the FA1, you were issued with a Glock 17 service pistol, serial number Mike, November 87465466, and 9x19mm Parabellum round. I was. No. Can you inform us as to how you personally became involved in Operation Damson? It was a real-time deployment authorised by the SFC. I travelled in the second vehicle, designated Victor Charlie 50, crewed by myself and the rest of my team. The rest of your team are AFO Victor Charlie 52, AFO Victor Charlie 53, and AFO Victor Charlie 54. We deployed to a holding position on one of four exit routes for the suspect and maintained radio contact with the operational senior AFO. 
The tape, please confirm this was an inspector using the call sign Victor Charlie 41. Correct. Victor Charlie 41 notified me that the suspect was travelling towards us and authorised us to carry out a real time intercept. Real time intercept? Yeah, things can be a bit fuzzy for me here, Sergeant. Maybe you could be a ray of sunshine and burn off the fog. Hmm? I'm waiting. So I'm waiting for a question. What the soup was asking you is how come, as per the statement given by Victor Charlie 41, you were ordered to Not support. ordered. Advised. But you went ahead and carried out the hard stop anyway. The suspect was travelling at high speed to an unknown destination with the intention of committing a gangland execution. Or so the intelligence said. The intelligence did say. And if that's wrong, sir, we'll take it out with him. Can we please just stick to a line of questioning that relates to Victor Charlie 51's actions? On you go, Sergeant. It'll help if I refer to the map in our folders. Document 4. Travelling at high speed along Prince's Road, the suspect approached a line of parked cars with open road ahead. I was concerned if we didn't carry out the hard stop immediately, the suspect would get away. Oh, and that was your decision, was it? No, sir. It was the decision of the Strategic Firearms Commander, who designated the operational objective of preventing the suspect carrying out an act of lethal force, added to which, as police officers, it's a non-negotiable duty to protect the public. May I answer the question now? These aren't ordinary dramas. These are desert island dramas. I'm getting close to where I almost <laughs> want you to guess, and I, re I reckon... I reckon, I reckon I, guess I, I reckon I can get three of the four. Yeah, four might be a bit tricky. Well, this is this is the one uh, that's, that's currently showing and is an obsession of mine. It's Game of Thrones. Yeah, In that case, I know you're three. three I think. Yeah, we got him. We got him. <laughs> we got him. I thought you might. I thought you might. I think this was the one. That we were unsure yeah. whether Game of Thrones would make it, weren't we, Luke? This is the biggest television show in the world at the moment and possibly ever for ratings and interest and, you know, and spoilers and downloads and everything you know i think we now have to very much consider the books very different from the shows i think the last two series of the game of thrones have shown you that the show is different it's, it's no longer an adaptation it's an interpretation of the books i think i'm obsessed by the books as well and the whole lore and the storyline it probably is the one tv show that does dominate my life right now if it's I'm a honest. hard question to answer, and I don't know how you're going to answer, and I hope you do give me an answer, otherwise I have to do an annoying edit. Yeah. But why do you think, what do you think shapes your taste in things? Why do you gravitate towards something more fantasy-based as opposed to something grounded in the... Not the real world, but sort of the... Because nothing's... Well, I think, in, the real I world. think in, my, in my formative teenage years, I did become a big reader of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. And, and, and I did like science fiction, the writings of things like Isaac Asimov uh, mm. and things like that, you know, who, who wrote things like I, Robot and the Foundation series, a book series which I'm now reading for the fourth time. Again, it, you know, it fascinates me. So I think I've always been interested in the other world, the other side of it, you know, and, and you know, I, I won't... Dis probably uh, two other shows deal a lot with that that are coming up you know this idea that we're not alone but it, i don't believe in aliens or anything like that but i think they're a fascinating thing to read about in a drama or a science fiction setting you know i've never been the sort of person that likes a war movie or anything like that but show me a pitch battle between a load of orcs and dragons and i'm i'm fascinated <laughs> <laughs> i mean i can't comment but is it still it, as good I, I would i feel do you, I'll let Gary answer first, and then. Well, no, I'd be interested to hear what you say. As they bring in more and more characters, it gets a bit diluted. You have weeks where some of the big characters aren't even in an episode. Some weeks, the characters that are in an episode don't need to be there. But obviously, all these actors have got contracts to appear in a certain amount of episodes. I mm. think this series, because it hasn't been based on any books, really, has sort of struggled. It still has had its moments, but. It's one that sort of comes and goes for me. Sometimes I can watch it straight through and then sometimes I'll have a bit of a break from it and be like a season behind. And This season you know, is the first one that I have sort of got into a routine of watching, oddly, even though I think it's one of the weaker ones. This series has been 
panned a little bit, although the ratings are still yeah. very high. I still uh, enjoy it, but I just yeah, think yeah, yeah. that... It, I, you know I what think, I mean? You know where I'm coming yeah. from into there, the There's story. definitely a, a, a camp of people that are book purists, or even old show purists, that are like, this season's not as good, they're not... Mm-hmm. Some of the situations aren't as obvious, and there was an incident in the I last show that, where... I would just say, like... There's some scenes that don't need to happen. And and on some scenes that don't make sense. You know, there's a whole storyline with one of the characters, Arya Stark, that a lot of people have been sh- absolutely shaking it's their heads. Arya, isn't it? Me-